Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good morning everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access to uh, weekend update show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Happy weekend. Hope everybody is healthy, happy, and is uh, you know, trading well, right? Trading well. Uh, if you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for uh, coming aboard, uh, spending a few minutes uh, with us. Uh, only thing I ask, if you could just be so kind, just take a second, uh, click that Thumbs up thingy, right? Click a thumbs up, uh, like the channel, subscribe, all that good stuff. And again, I'll try my best uh, to kind of give you my uh, two cents of what I think is going to happen uh, in the markets, technically, or at least be prepared uh, for it. So uh, again, nothing t uh, materialistically has uh, changed from week to week to week. Again, the big uh, point of this whole rally is this uh, you know, reclaiming of the 50-day moving average on the 9th uh, of the 11th of September. And since then, the Qs uh, have gone from, you know, two, 470 uh, to nearly uh, to nearly 500. It's a, it's a pretty big move, almost 30 points on the QQQs in, in about a month. Um, right now, no matter what the geopolitical headlines are, we are kind of holding serve. Even if we have uh, violent pullbacks, so we've had, you know, two really violent pullbacks uh, in the last four sessions, uh, even though we, we find ourselves with some volatility, especially days that you're having a bunch of uh, Fed governors speaking back to back to back, we're still finding ourselves way above uh, the 50-day moving average and structurally uh, behaving uh, very, very well. And now that we have uh, earnings season uh, back, right? Uh, again, it feels like earnings season is like, you know, you blink, it starts up again. Uh, financials uh, have been... Uh, pretty good. You had Goldman Sachs uh, with a big move up uh, to start the earnings season. Morgan Stanley has been on an incredible, incredible uh, run. Uh, you had a big run in Bank of America. You had a pretty big run before a pullback uh, in Citibank shares. So the financials are healthy. Uh, it's going to be very, very interesting to see what the retailers kind of give, uh, you know, kind of give a, a microcosm of what uh, retail people are spending or not spending uh, in the next week or so, and technology kicked off earnings. Uh, Netflix uh, kicked it off on Thursday night. Um, again, tech earnings continue to be overall pretty good. You know, pretty good indeed. Netflix had a great quarter, uh, closed at 52-week highs, a massive, massive move. Um, and now the question is, what happens next, right? Um, you know, 1%, you know, 1% uh, all down the line uh, gains for all the major benchmarks. Uh, we are, what, uh, you know, three weeks, right? Three weeks or so uh, away from the election. Um, you know, a lot of people believe that we might be in a holding pattern uh, until the election. I, I personally, you know, don't really care, uh, you know, if it's a Republican or a Democrat in office because, like in my adult life, right? I, I started trading during the Clinton administration. Clinton was a Democrat. We had the greatest bull market of my career. Uh, then we had, you know, a Republican, right? Republican coming in next with George Bush. And then we had a horrific market, right? We had an absolute horrific market with 9-11, uh, with the mortgage crisis, with the Iraq war. Again, that's a Republican. Then we turned around we had a Democrat, right? We had a Democrat. We had Obama, a great bull market. We had uh, Trump, a great bull market. We had uh, you know, Biden right now, a great bull market. So the idea that one party is better than the other for the market is asinine. Again, I just gave you examples of you know of of the difference between Republican and uh, and Democrat. And without going into a political you know political conversation. The market is the market. The market's going to do whatever it has to do, whether it's, um, you know, w whether it's the Republicans, the Democrats, the Freemasons, or the Illuminati in office, for God's sake, right? The stocks are going to do what they have to do. They don't make sense. I know I see, you know, new traders all the time. I don't understand why this market's round. You don't need to understand. That's the whole point. I don't understand. I'm doing this for 25 years. 
You don't need to understand, right? When stocks clean up supply, stocks go higher. When stocks clean up demand, they go lower. It's all sentiment. It's all technical analysis. The idea that something has to make sense doesn't need to make sense. Always remember that. So you had Netflix kicking off earnings. Uh, The big one for this week, I believe, is going to be Tesla, right? It's going to be Tesla. Uh, yeah, first of all, you have incredible speculation money still flowing into the markets. We've been kind of talking about that uh, the whole week. Bitcoin has been going uh, out of its mind. It's taking all the crap coins uh, with it, and it's all taken. It, we, we've seen now rallies. We've, we've been talking about uh, we've been talking about MSTR for three weeks, right? Look at look at well, again. Look at the common denominator. Look what happens when the stock reclaims the 50-day moving average. It goes absolutely nuts. We've been talking about coin playing catch-up, right? Coin reclaimed back the 50-day moving average is gone nuts. Even names like Mara, right? Mara, you know, is starting to bust out, right? It's, it's starting to bust out. This is now the highest close of the whole formation. It looks like 1930s are on deck. A name like Riot, for example, right? They're all busting out here. So you have speculation money uh, running. You have uh, banks uh, are running. You have technology stocks, again, continuation, rotation, rotation, rotation. And I'll give you an example of how the disconnect on, on some of these stocks are. So if you guys remember, ASML came out with earnings or leaked earnings accidentally, and it took down the whole semiconductor group. Well, a lot of the names did not recover. If you look, for example, like LRCX, it didn't recover. If you look at AMD, didn't cover. If you look at uh, AMAT, okay, didn't recover. If you look at um, CLAC, didn't recover. But when you look at, you know, the haves, right? The haves, the stocks have been performing very, very well. R is holding in incredibly well. Avago is holding in incredibly well. And NVIDIA, you know, there there is a conversation out there, right? If you look at the weekly chart, there is a conversation out there that NVIDIA hit a double top from the June 17th highs. I think the jury's still out on that. Number one, we're, number one, when it hit it, right? When it hit those highs, it hit it uh, three days ago, right? That's number one. So if it would have reversed three, four, five, six dollars, it would have happened by now. I'm not saying it can't, right? It still can't. But the point is the longer it doesn't reverse, the whole double top theory starts to shrink. Uh, we're still seeing major, major call buying into the stock. The 140s, 145s, 150s, 160s, a little bit longer out uh, in uh, expiration. So I, I still believe there is a shot uh, this week that if the market doesn't sell off, NVIDIA tests all-time highs uh, and starts going again. But the point of uh, earnings, right? Earnings season is here. That means the technology market is going to start re- recording. Uh, let's talk about some charts, right? Let's talk about some charts. So Tesla, you know, it's been in this channel now ever since the Robo event for one, two, three, four, five, six days. Monday will be seven. They report on Wednesday, okay? I thought at some point in the last seven days that Tesla was going to either break above this channel and make a run back to the 50-day moving average on a pre-earnings run or lose uh, the you know the, the Robo taxi event news and go lower. None of that has happened. So, you know, the, now that we're only, what, three days away uh, from Tesla's earnings, you know, it, it's starting to appear that nothing is going to get resolved until its earnings. Uh, obviously, when their earnings come out, the stock will have uh, come out of this range, but it doesn't appear that the stock will come out of this range until Wednesday night's earnings. We'll see, right? We'll see what happens there. I'm hoping we can get a trade prior to the Wednesday night release, but you know, we'll see what happens. So Tesla kind of dead money. Uh, You look at a name, for example, like Apple. Uh, Apple had a nice pop, right? Nice pop on Friday. It looks like, again, the whole uh, China uh, iPhone saga, right? One week, uh, the sales are down 20%. The next week, they're up 20%. Well, guess what? Which was on Friday, had a nice gap up. And look how close Apple is now at all-time highs, right? We're very, very close to attacking those July highs. Again, a name uh, we definitely need to monitor uh, going into uh, next week. Um, you know, look at Google, right? Look at Google. This is kind of you know my point of like the haves and have-nots, right? Google has been one of the very few stocks still below, still below a major, major supply zone. Again, it's above the 50-day moving average is good, but it just for some reason, they just can't get above it. Again, another stock that's kind of dead money. 
Uh, you have AMD, which I am definitely, definitely watching to the downside this week just because it can't rally, right? Again, guys, think about this. If, if it, NVIDIA is good, right? If NVIDIA is good and Avago is good and ARM is good, but the other semiconductors who can't rally, well, again, that's the disconnect. You always have to be prepared on both sides. So look how close uh, AMD is back to the 50-day moving average. Got it moderate. Not necessarily, you know, it's an imminent trade. And, and you know, who's to say? Maybe AMD wakes up this week and starts attacking the top of the channel. But for, for on the surface going into Monday session, this is not a, a good-looking chart. Look at SMCI. We saw a plethora, right? A plethora of massive call buying that expired all on Friday. We saw the 50, 51s, 52s, 53 and a half, 54s. None of them, right? None of them paid off. Not only did none of them paid off, well, the stock couldn't rally at all. And if you look at SMCI, for example, right, you got now three days in a row, it's holding on to the 10-day moving average. My point is if it can't rally on option flow, well, when the hell is it going to rally? Maybe somebody knows something with all those bets, but hey, it expired, right? All those calls expired worthless. So you know, again, we have to watch SMCI on both sides. You could clearly see a channel to the upside, but now you're seeing a very, very clean three-day channel to the downside. And if it loses the 10-day moving average, uh, it's going to get hit as well. So it's very, very important. Netflix, uh, again, monster quarter. Uh, again, you need to buy, you need to watch this thing on dips, right? You need to watch this thing on dips. Uh, any any profit taken on Monday into the rising uh, 60 minutes support is very, very important to kind of gauge that level to see if you can get cheaper shares. Uh, Meta, here's one I'm looking to the downside. And the reason why I'm saying that, again, it's kind of the same, uh, kind of the same thing for AMD, kind of the same thing for SMCI. The last few days, we had some pretty good runs in the technology space. Meta wasn't one of them. And now we Meta has closed one, two, three, four, five days in a row. That's one full week of trading that it closed lower than the open. That's obviously not a good thing. Do you see how the same way SMCI was holding on to the 10-day moving average, right? It's holding on for deal life. Well, look at Meta, right? Meta is holding on to the 20-day support. Again, we got to keep an eye on this. Again, we could, we could have a scenario that Meta wakes up and reclaims back this top of the channel and just starts exploding back. But again, this is the whole point of being prepared on both sides. What happens if it loses the 20-day moving average? I will definitely be prepared on both sides of the trade. So it's something uh, definitely you want to uh, monitor going into uh, this week. Let me give you guys some other names as well. Look at Disney, right? Look at Disney with all their issues uh, with the hurricanes and this, that, and the third with inflation. Disney is very, very close, guys, of busting out above the September highs. Definitely one to monitor uh, going into uh, Monday's session. Look at a name like LUMN. It was a big high flyer. You guys remember LUMN? Big high flyer in the summer. Had a monster run from like $1.50 all the way up to like 8 bucks. Well, this is the first close above daily supply. Keep an eye on this thing, folks. If this thing starts confirming uh, this daily supply next week, maybe this thing wakes up and starts testing uh, highs. Uh, look at a name like RDFN, right? RDFN had a massive, massive run. Another massive run from 6 uh, all the way to uh, 15 from the summer into September. You see how close this thing is to getting above supply, right? If RDFN starts getting above the supply zone, it's going to start opening this thing up for a potential move back uh, to the upper uh, Bollinger Band. So there, there's definitely a lot of really good value, I think, on both sides. Uh, obviously, I want to watch NVIDIA this week if it can uh, confirm uh, all-time highs. Uh, I want to obviously watch Meta and SMCI and AMD and Google for potential weakness. So if the market goes higher, we have plenty of things to do. If the market goes lower, well, we have plenty of things to do. And that is your job as a trader. So if you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, thank you very much for your viewership. Thank you very much for your support. For all you guys who are interested, right, in pivots. And again, that's what I do. I trade pivots. It's the PS60 theory. Stocks get clean up at supply. They go higher. Uh, stocks get clean up the demand. They go lower. Stocks trade from channel to channel, from supply to supply, demand to demand. And if you are interested in pivots and you've been watching for years and following along, all it takes is 30 days to kick the tire and see if pivots are a right fit for you. Guys, God bless everybody. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And with God's help, I will see you on the field on Monday. Take care.